Yeah. That's a lot of dot damage, isn't it? Stick around to see what we're doing. Hey, it's Dan, and welcome back to Unified Gaming. Now, in this one, we're going to break down the Infector. This is a Magic Warden PvP dot build. As with all of my PvP builds, I'm going to go through the race, the gear, the mundus, everything you need to know so that you, you can make the build yourself and do just as well. And with all of my videos, I always post a follow up giving you some kind of tips and tricks how to play the build, so make sure that you are subscribed so you don't miss that. So, starting with our race, we are a High Elf. A High Elf from Testament is one of the best races for this. You get extra uh, stamina sustain due to this passive, you get more magicka, which is nice damage, and more damage, so a High Elf is a great, great choice. A Dark Elf is also just as good. Alternatively, you could go as an Argonian or as an Ord. All have their own merits, but the race isn't too important in this one, guys. As for the Mundus Stone, I'm actually using the Lava Mundus. This buffs our sets and our damage, so this is a great, great damage Mundus to use. But if you are wanting some more resources to work with, work with the um, Atronach, alternatively go with the Mage, so you've got a bit of flexibility there. And you can probably notice that we are a Vampire Stage 3. Vampire Stage 3 gives us access to a passive called Undeath, which in all honesty is a massive, massive difference. Undeath is basically Mark of the Prior as a passive, which is one of the best, if not the best, defensive monster, uh, 5 piece sets in the game. So this is a really powerful passive to get. As for kind of food, consume balls, things you need to use, I actually use Tri-Sat food, I use Bewitch Sugar Skulls. You can use purple stuff if you're not as you know, rich as that. And I also use some um, Tri-Sat potions, they kind of cover all of the things you need. So they're really, really good. As for kind of my attributes and stat page, my stat page is like this. I'm just going to put on the betting net and my armor buff. So front bar, we have this 27k magicka, 35k health, 17k stamina, 1800 regen. We've got a glyph that adds 667 roughly, plus the betty. So we have about 2.7k mag regen, which is loads, and it is needed in all honesty. We have 20k spell resist and 18.7k physical, but we are a vampire which really really makes us bulky, especially with that large health pool. As for the bat bar, we have 27k magicka, 35k health, 17k stamina, 1700 uh, regen, we have two, uh, two, uh, 25,000 spell resist and 23,000 physical resist, so we are bulkier here. We're a little bit more crit resist and we also have the vampire passive once more. You can notice that my attributes are set up as 44 in magicka and 20 in health. This is what works best for me. I have tried all magicka and there is a damage boost, yes, but I find having a bit more health really really helps with some of the skills we use so it just makes you a bit easier to survive so get a bit of health if you can but you can change these as you see fit just to find your sort of sweet spot. I'm now going to go through the skills and break it all down. If you are liking the video, then do leave a like. It really, really helps. It tells YouTube I'm a better YouTuber. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. As with the skills, on the front bar, we're using Screaming Cliff Racer. Now, this skill looks underwhelming at first. It's 7,000 damage. You do get a 15% damage boost in this, which is nice. And you set people off balance, which with CP is a 10% boost there plus the off balance boost. So this has a load of bonus damage on top and we have Malakath so this really really helps but I mainly use this for the off balance that if you hit somebody with this you can then do a medium move with the Inferno Staff and it will stun them as you see in the gameplay time and time again. I then pair this with um, Fetcher Infection this is a great dot it applies minor vulnerability so it's hit more damage from your dots and stuff which is awesome it does 50% more damage if you cast it a second time so again loads and loads of damage I then use Flame Reach as another dot. So again, this is a really useful dot. It pops like a lift as well, so that's always nice. We then have Blue Betty, which is Magicka Sustain, Major Sorcery, and it removes some negative effects. So you can just spam this, and it's free to cast. I then use Bird of Prey as a passive damage boost. So that's 5% um, bonus damage due to Mind of Berserk. 
And in the animal companions, there's a passive called Advanced Species, which is an 8% damage boost, which is 2% per skill. Which means that Bird of Prey is actually a 7% damage boost, so that's really, really useful to know. And then for the ultimate, we use Northern Storm. And this is a really good ult because it's basically another big AoE dot. So you can dot somebody up, cast this, and just chase them around and they will die. It snares them too. Alternatively, you can use Soul Assault or you can use Meteor. As for the bat bar, I am using Ice Fortress. This is your armor buff and minor protection, so it's a really useful skill to have. We then use Consuming Trap, which is another dot. This is a nice dot because it does good damage, but when they die, you get resources back, health, magicka, and stamina. So this is a really good way to get free sustain, especially in this build. We then have Arctic Blast, which basically is a really big heal over time. Um, it's quite a good burst heal. So you see it here. It's 9.6k burst still. We've got a nice 1,000 health every second, so it's a really good heal. And on top of it, it does stun people if they're near you after three hits, so it's just a really good all-no button. We then use Structured Entropy, which is again another dot, and it heals us a little bit every two seconds. So it's not much healing, but it's just a little bit extra. And we then have Crystallized Slab, which this is ridiculously good, like really underrated, especially in this build. This makes us immune to range damage, so we cast this, and then if people hit us, it shoots projectiles back, damaging them. The damage is calculated in the bar you're on, so this is almost 8,000 when we're buffed and stuff, it's silly. And it can proc three times, you get most of the magical cost back, so it's almost free to use. Really, really, really good skill. And we then have Healing Thicket, and this is our Olno button, it's a, kind of a big burst for us and any ally nearby. It also has a heal over time on top, so this is a really good one to use, and it's dirt cheap. You can, however, change it to the Sword and Shield Ultimate, and use Shield Ball if you prefer, and put it onto the Reflective one, which reflects damage. So, yeah, this is a really good ult to have if you prefer. But that's all the skills. I wouldn't change any of the skills in all honesty. They're kind of in the right spots for the most amount of damage, whilst they're being playable. I'm now going to go through the gear. But before I do that, I just want to say a massive thank you to all of our Patreons. Like, their continued support really, really helps me make videos. So if you want to support myself and the channel to gain access to the videos early, to have help in Discord, builds and stuff, then do consider donating as little or as much as you can. It all really, really helps. And if you can't support us on Patreon, just like in the video and commenting. That helps just as much. As for the gear, we are using Torx Pet, Falcon Scoria, one trainee, Malakath, and Oblivion's Foe. So what does each set do, you ask? Well, Torg's Pact buffs our Glyph, which is awesome. This can proc every two seconds now, so on every other light attack, this procs, which is loads of regen, loads of damage. I actually found an Absorbed Magic Glyph was more useful than a Frost Glyph, but if you want to eke out some more damage, use a Frost Glyph here instead. As you can see with the 2, 3, 4, 5 piece, it's armor, health, armor, so nice and bulkiness. And it increases the glyph damage and the cooldown, so really, really useful set. On the bat bar, we are bat bar at Oblivion's Foe. And the glyph, and this can be whatever you like in all honesty. You can use um, poisons if you really prefer. I would go defending and I'll go impairing or reinforced. I will not reinforced for this one. The damage difference between the impairment and the reinforced like, reduction is very minor, so it doesn't make much difference to be honest. Um, but that's what I use on the back bar. The idea that Torg's Pact is only active on the front bar, and Oblivion's Foe is only active on the back bar. So we swap bar, this is now active, five piece, and this is now off. So just do factor that in, okay? We then have Falcon Scoria, so I use a heavy and a medium piece. This should be in pen ideally and magicka. I just need to get the stuff done basically. Um, try and start on all the big pieces, so head, chest, and legs. Magicka on all the small. As for kind of the loadout, I have Falcon Square Helmet, shoulder, trainee, um, chest. This can be anything you like though, in all honesty. You can buy this and it's just max health, so one piece. Really, really good set. Uh, we then have Oblivion's Foe Sash, Torg's Hands, Oblivion's Foe Legs, and Oblivion's Foe Feet. In the ideal world, you would ideally have your chest and your legs. So your chest being heavy and your legs being medium, and your monster set being light, I just don't have the right pieces. 
And then for the jewelry, I use Torx Pat Purple. I use Infused Magical Recovery on all of the jewelry. And then again, I have two Torx jewelry. You're probably asking yourself now, what do you do if you can't afford Torx Pat as the jewelry? Because it's expensive. And I completely get that. I totally, totally get that. So good set, she could use things like um, Icy Conjurer, which is a really powerful set. So that's a really good dot set to use. You could even use just stamina sets like um, Serious Scales, which is a really powerful set as well. Or you could do something like Winterborn, which is a good set because that does proc. And you'll just simply use a lot of um, Ice Staff to proc on the light attacks, or you'd change this to Russian Shock. So if you want to change to Pat, go with Icy Conjurer, Winterborn, Serious Scales, all of those are great, great sets. If you have any questions what you could change it to, and you've got a word that wasn't answered fully, just message me on Discord. There's a link in the description and I can help you there, or post a comment here. Just note that I don't always get the notifications for the comments, so I might miss it. I'm going to go through the champion points now. This is what I found to be most effective in jewels and in sort of Imperial City and open world. So feel free to pause it, rewind it, and go back. I would just note that we have Exploiter as well, which is a 10% damage boost. And because we set people off balance with the Cliff Racer, it's a 10% damage boost, which is really noticeable. So that's why we have this many here. But yeah, that is the CP. So I've gone through it a few times. Just pause it where you see fit. And then the last thing I do in all of my videos is I go through with tips, tricks, things to help you out. And this one is really short, actually. The general rule of thumb is that being offensive and dotting somebody up helps you stay alive in a 1v1. That sounds counterintuitive, I know. But if you dot somebody up, they end up taking about 4 to 5k dot damage a second. Which means as soon as they start to attack you, they have like a 2-3 to three second window before they have to stop attacking you. Because they take too much damage. Which means you basically are quite hard to kill in a 1v1. And there's many times where I've dueled people and they can't kill me because their health guard bar gets too low and they have to stop and go defensive. And the ones that don't stop just die typically, especially if Valkan's Warrior lands on them. So I would you know, suggest being a bit more offensive on this. And also, like, I'm sitting in a group. This is made for more of a group base. It's not your solo 1vx build, sadly. As for kind of how do you play in Battlegrounds or Imperial City and that stuff, do jump into our Twitch. I do show it there on the weekend. So you can just ask, can you jump on this build? And I will. We do that Saturday at 9 o'clock in the UK. And I'm also going to refer you to a follow-up video that's coming out just after this, a couple days later, when we break down one of the BG matches I have. That's a typical BG, not like super big godly, super big bad. It's you know, a typical BG match. And you can obviously see how we do on Twitch, as I've said. And I'm going to go through and just show what am I thinking? What, what am I doing? Why am I doing it? So that way you know exactly what to do, how to play this build. And if you have any questions, as I've said, leave a comment, message me in Discord. All those things will really help. But I'm going to wrap this one up here because it is long enough as it is, guys. So I want to say a massive thank you to those patrons once again. Like, your support helps me make videos, so it's really, really appreciated. And if you want to help myself and the channel, you can donate on Patreon. You get access to videos early. You get to message me on Discord for that build stuff. So there's loads and loads of benefits. There's a link in the description. But I'm going to catch you in the next video. So thanks for watching, guys. Take care and bye.